Uh, today's talk is The Art of Science, and it's by uh, Dr. Um, Marvin Zelkowitz. And he's a professor, uh, emeritus and research professor in the Computer Science Department at the University of Maryland. He's been studying software development issues and technology transfer the, for the past 40 years. He's also on our board of, director and, board of directors and currently serves as our president. Marv? You're president. I'm pre sorry, as treasurer. <laughs> this is treasurer. Thank you. I'm going to be talking about the art of science. Um, so where did this talk come from? About a month ago, I was asked to give a talk at a computer science conference in Florida. And uh, people really liked it. And I was thinking about it. And I sort of said, well, if I change the topic slightly, or change it, it would be applicable to a, you know, a, a wider audience. And the talk there was more about the, the relationship between skepticism and, uh, and research. And this, in this respect, computer science research. And I said it wouldn't take much work to uh, redo the talk. And many, many, many hours uh, <laughs> later, uh, you see the slides in front of you, which bears some relationship to the talk I gave a month ago, but not totally. Um, I've got, um, most of you are not interested in the details of computer science research, so I sort of toned that, da that part down of the talk. Um, there is. A, a, there's some introduction to skepticism, and those parts I assume most of you are very familiar with. And if not, it probably uh, pays to hear some of it again. And if you haven't been here before, I hope you'll find it interesting. Um, and with that, let's see uh, where we end up. So the way I've organized this talk is I'm going to give you a couple of uh, personal comments on how I arrived at the theme of this talk. Uh, does skepticism and computer science play nice together? You know, do the two uh, fields really work? And how does this relate to other scientific disciplines? So I'm going to use computer science, or more specifically, my own research area of software engineering, the, the building of large systems and how you make them work better, you know, better, faster, cheaper is the jargon that's always used. But how does it work or relate to other uh, fields of science? And I think they're more, they're more in common than different, as we'll see later. So what I've been doing uh, for the past 40 years, you know, I've been at the University of Maryland since the late Middle Ages. Uh, I've been at the University of Maryland teaching and doing research in software engineering. But those who know me know that I have three other areas that I'm very interested in. One is I like to attend science fiction conventions. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Uh, everyone runs around all weekend, you know, playing aliens have an interest in model railroading. That's, as you can see, it's still unfinished, but that's about one third of the layout that's in my basement. Um, now that I'm a professor emeritus, I'm supposedly having more time to work on it. Turns out not to be true, but in theory, I have a lot more time to work on the layout. And I consider myself a professional skeptic. As Curtis mentioned, I am treasurer of NCAS, and I've been a member of NCAS for m many years. So when I mention that to people, the, the re first response is, what does that mean? And then I'll tell, say I belong to an organization of skeptics, you know, you people out here. And then for someone else, they usually get sort of an hysterical laugh, like, you know, what does that mean? You know, it, it, uh, as we like to say, there's a big giggle factor in saying you're a skeptic. You know, what does it mean you're a skeptic? Because the view that most people have is someone who sort of is a naysayer, who tries to say everything is wrong, it's not right, you can't do that, uh, and so on. But what does it really mean, and how does skepticism relate to scientific research? So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about general skepticism. Uh, if you've been around for NCAS for 10 or more years, you've seen some of these slides at a talk I've given uh, about three years ago and another talk I gave maybe 10 years ago. So some of these you may recognize. I'm very good at recycling, so <laughs> slides have been uh, reused over and over again. So the common view of skeptics is there are a bunch of people that can't be helped. Um, you know, meeting tonight, help for skeptics, or is there? Another view of skeptics are, are they cynics? You know, skeptics is one who shows a disposition to disbelieve in the sincerity or goodness of human motives, and so on. And a skeptic is one who, with doubt or incredulity as to the truth of some assertion or supposed fact. So a big difference is a cynic disbelieves everything, a skeptic wants to be convinced. So why is it important? You know, again, I don't have to re 
I hope I don't have to repeat this to the audience here, but why is skepticism an important topic? Well, you read the paper and lots of things appear. Moon landing is a hoax, global warming, alternative medicine, various conspiracy theories, natural remedies, and so on, evolution. Uh, there are all kinds of things that appear. So the basic problem is, you know, what do you believe and what should your opinion be about these things? Uh, so we have this emphasis, uh, the emphasis in, of skepticism is on critical thinking. So this is the mission statement for, for NCAS, and it's on our website somewhere. But the important thing is that part of our mission is actively promoting the scientific method, rational inquiry, and education. So the emphasis is on the proper use of science and the scientific method in everyday life. And science is a way of thinking much more than it is a body of facts, was said by Carl Sagan. So a very famous skeptic and astrophysicist who died about 13 years ago. So my first insight, as I said before, I joined NCAS around 1992. And after one or two years, I realized that my, my professional role as a computer science researcher um, was exactly the same as my role as a member of NCAS, only the domain of interest was different. As a computer science researcher, I was interested in what techniques and, and, and methods and tools that the developer of software uses are, are valid. And as a skeptic in a group like NCAS or any of the other skeptics organizations, uh, what, should I, what should my view be in terms of investigating various other claims, like the list I gave before, the UFO, UFOs, moon landing hoax, global warming, and so on. What I learned over the next few years is that that's not a common belief in the science community. And we'll go into that, um, that the two are really the same thing. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Some general backgrounds about science. Does science tell us reality? Well, if you went through school, you learn, you know, the view of most people that science is a bag of facts. Uh, e equals mc squared, people have 23 pairs of chromosomes, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, unless you're one of the six billion non-Americans where water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So, is that what science is really all about? Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really not a bag of facts. It's really a process to understand the world. So science is a, is a method uh, of how you investigate phenomenon and try to understand them. And this method is usually called the scientific method. And it's taught in schools, uh, probably around fourth or fifth grade, repeated ad infinitum, and is somewhat right. Um, uh, you generate hypo you know, it's given some variation of this, of this list. You know, you generate some hypothesis, you pair an experiment to test the hypothesis, you run an experiment and collect some relevant data, you evaluate the results against the hypothesis, you modify the hypothesis to account for differences or discrepancies between what your hypothesis was and the data you found, and you repeat until you either get satisfactory results or you lose interest and abandon it as the result being not, not appropriate. Uh, we'll see later, we'll talk more about it, that very few scientists really do this in terms of the scientific method. Uh, but, uh, in fact, you could say it's right, except step one is where all the time is spent. Uh, how do you generate a hypothesis? That's the interesting part. Uh, two through five is just validation to show that what you have is, is correct. And the real art and the real creativity of science is really at step one. How do you come up with a new hypothesis that's of interest? Falsifiability is also not mentioned um, as one of the uh, cornerstones of the scientific method. Um, you know, the scientific method works by hypothes hypothesis generation followed by experimentation. But a major goal of experimentation is falsifiability. Uh, the philosopher uh, Karl Popper, who in this audience may not an appropriate statement, but he's become sort of the patron saint of, of science. Um, he asserts that hypothesis uh, or a proposition or a theory is scientific only if it is falsifiable, meaning uh, the major goal of experimentation is to show that some theory is false. Uh, you want to show that, or in other words, you want to show that the negative is false so that the statement, the hypothesis you're presenting might possibly be true. 